In the build-up to the 2023 governorship elections in Delta State, Sheriff Obovewari has extended an olive branch to Mr. Edebive as the uh, Supreme Court reaffirms his candidacy. Now, Mr. Edebive uh, earlier alleged inconsistencies in the names of the academic certificate uh, um, submitted by Mr. Obevowori uh, to INEC. Now, he contended that Mr. Obevowori uh, was not eligible to participate in the primary elections on the grounds of alleged discrepancies in his academic qualifications. However, the Supreme Court had said that the allegations of certificate forgery and faking of documents against the Speaker were such that required witnesses from those who issued the certificates. And joining us to discuss this is Ogagagene uh, Ogene Yole, Deputy DG um, for More Delta Youth Project, and of course, is a member of the PDP. Good to have you join us. Good evening. Good evening, and thank you. The last time you and I had this conversation, we were still talking about the discrepancies, but what we're hearing today is that there is some form of peace process going on within the party to unite the, the, the factions, the somewhat warring factions. Um, Paint a picture to us as to who's extending the olive branch and who's receiving it. Okay, so first I want to say uh, you opened the conversation but you did not close it. You said the last time we, did, we had this conversation, we are still talking about the discrepancies. It is important to also note now that there are no more discrepancies. The Supreme Court have ruled and in favor of the uh, candidate, the right honorable Sheriff Oboroweri. Yeah. Now, talking about uh, fashions, uh, like I reiterated that time, that we don't have any fashion, in, in uh, two fashions of PDP in Delta State. We only have one PDP. Up to now, we only have one state uh, chairman of the People's Democratic Party at the state level. And at our local government, down to ward levels, there is no fashion. There are no two chairmen uh, in one particular ward or in a local government. That is to tell you that there are not fashion. What we had was a disagreement within the party. Some people felt that our candidates were not qualified to there, and they went, they approached the court. It is their right to do so, their fundamental right to do so. And these, like I said, persons are democracy. They have gone to the court, they have tested their, their opinions, or would I say their, 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 their uh, reservations with the law, and the, it, it went in favor of our candidate. Now, immediately, even before the uh, uh, Supreme Court ruled, we as a people in the PDP have been able to set up an internal uh, peace uh, move, the Reconciliation Committee, the Peace and Reconciliation Committee, that reached out not only to the persons who went to court on the uh, gubernatorial election, but those people who contested and lost, those people who went for the primary, different people, both at the assembly level, at the House of Rep level, level, and at the Senate level, who went for elections and left. And so far, most of the uh, gubernatorial candidates, uh, uh, aspirants prior to the primaries, have since integrated themselves into the campaigns, the big, big campaigns, and they have been going around the state campaigning for the uh, person of. Talking about a we sent, uh, we, we heard, uh, after the Supreme Court, he came and addressed his people and told them that it is not yet over, that they should keep hope, uh, uh, hope alive. But the most important message he left with them was that he was still in the PDP. And luckily yesterday, you know, disagreement like this, it takes time to heal. People must have been caught in the process. And so, just the day before yesterday or yesterday, when the campaign, word to word campaign trail got to his word in Afise, he was he, he sent word and he sent a representative. And the representative clearly stated that he was not able to catch up and uh, meet his flight. He, he, he missed his flight. If not, he would have been there in person. But he also announced that uh, uh, who, uh, who is their principal, has sent 100,000 naira to support. Uh, the Kolana presentation for the candidate, who is the uh, right of the Sharif of Barori, and also went for that to ask them to announce that he's fully with the PDP and that his support, his support is with right of the Sharif of Barori, and that anytime he returns, he will return very soon to call a world meeting 
and also inform his word officially that he is with the candidate, that the court uh, uh, processes are over and it is now to reintegrate. That brought warmth in the heart of a lot of PDP members and so many of his followers who have long wished that uh, we are going to unite and work together as a party because in Delta State and in Nigeria, we have no other option now than to kick the opposition out and remain and uh, rebuild the country. Going forward, I want to also say that major key players that were interested in this uh, 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 particular matter have also come out to speak up. For instance, the daughter of the uh, former uh, governor, uh, Ibori, His Excellency James Onanevi Ibori, is a House of Friends candidate in the Ito East and West Federal constituency. And she was with our principal, right, Narebu Shari Kukurore, in all the world that uh, a world to world campaign in Ito East and West. And she was able, in, in all those words, to reiterate support of herself and her father in those places. One of the long serving friends of the, uh, the former governor is also a senatorial candidate in the Delta Central Senatorial uh, uh, District. The person of Senator Iro Tamori came out to say that he can affirm that our leader, Chief James Onane Febori, is with the PDP and the support Sheriff Poporowere. Also, a, a few days, three days after that, the immediate past governor of Delta State, who is the person of uh, 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 His Excellency Emmanuel Wetogba, hosted the Delta South Nigeria campaign in his work, in his uh, house, and informed them that he's the full support of Sheriff Oberori, and urged everybody, irrespective of their differences, to support the PDP to win in the election. With this, we can confidently say that the internal crisis in PDP has finally been put to rest, and we are headed for a very interesting time. We are ready for the election now, and we are going together as a whole song, as, in, as a united party. Now that, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about your candidate, because, of course, we know that that seat is keenly contested. We also have the obedient movement in your state. We also have the opposition. Uh, and the Deputy Senate President, who's eyeing that seat also, uh, I beg your pardon, um, yes, the Deputy Senate President, yes, um, he's also eyeing that seat. Um, so I'm going to ask a very direct question. What are the chances that your candidate is going to be the man for the job, especially as we know that there are three very strong contenders for that seat? Okay, first, there are no three very strong contenders. We only have one very strong contender. Others are just running around. First, let's we start with the obedient movement you are talking about. Yes, when you talk about the obedient movement in my state, yes, there's obedient movement. There was an obedient, a very formidable obedient movement in my state prior to the campaign. But when campaign started, when we started reaching out to the people, word to word, community by community, to let them understand the essence of being together as a people. That movement has really died down in my state. And even when it was high, when things were high, it wasn't about the state. It was about the, the presidency. As I can tell you that Deltans, 99% of Deltans don't know who is the uh, uh, Labour Party candidate in the in Delta state. 99.9% .9 of Delta states, even the obedience themselves, does not know the name of the governorship candidate of the Labour Party in my state. And then talking about the deputy senate president, yes, deputy senate president is in the race. And of course, he is not just he's the number four person in Nigeria, but that does not translate into strength of the party in my state. APC in my state is a rejected party. Nobody in Delta State will, in his right sense, vote a candidate of the old APC. As I'm talking to you in the entire House of but, Assembly, but 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 that's but but he's the Senate. He's a Deputy Senate President, and this is not his first time at the National Assembly. So when you say nobody will vote for him, who are the people who voted for him, and why is he he's he there? Well, I because... said nobody in his right senses would vote for APC in my state, especially for the governorship position. Now let me explain. He may be a strong person within his party structure. 
which of course earned him the number four position in Nigeria, which is the uh, deputy senate president. But that does not translate into strength of the party in my state. Individual strength in his party structure does not translate into party strength in my state. My state is a full PDP state, and we are in PDP because PDP have continued to deliver dividends of democracies to the democracy in our, to our people in Delta State. And as such, Delta stand with them. I was trying to explain something to you. In the entire state assembly, we have 29 members of the state assembly. Only two of them, 27 are PDP, we are PDP, and only two of them we are in APC. As of today, a member of the House of Assembly representing the Deputy Senate President constituency just decamped to the PDP with thousands of its followers, leaving only one person of the APC in the House of Assembly who does not even come from the constituency of the Deputy Senate President. So as we talk to you, PDP has the 99% PDP has the, uh, uh, 99 .9 majority with only 0 0.1 uh, minority from the APC. Now what we are talking how about... How did you arrive? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, your national TV. How did you arrive at these statistics? I, I mean, you have one vote. You, you have one vote. Have so does every other member of the PDP. They have just one vote. You can't tell me on national TV that the PDP has 99 point. Come on. Where did you arrive from? Where now, did you arrive at that statistic it from? It is practical. We are okay. just. Can you kindly explain to me how you arrived at this? Because, like I said, you have one vote. So does every other member of your political party. You can't call the elections before it even starts in the first place. Are you still there? Um, Comrade, can you hear me? We are in a word to word campaign, 270 words of Delta State. Okay. And almost all the words have been rounded up. When you go to that place, you see the crowd, like the crowd in a local government campaign structure. Oh, I think that um, we're having a connection issue there with uh, Ogaga Gane. Is we're going to... Ogaga Gane, we, we lost uh, that connection with you for a bit. Um, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Go ahead quickly, in closing. Do what to what campaign? They selected three words in every local government to campaign. Out of those three words in every local government that you have like uh, uh, at least 10 words, some 11 words, 13 words, translated to winning when you can when you are able to campaign in only three words. Out of the 200, out of the 270 words, APC have selected only 75 white words to campaign in their word to word campaign because they wanted to borrow from the World to World campaign that BDP has done. If they have the strength, they would have gone to the 270 words that BDP did. But as we are talking to you, they're only going to 75 words out of the 250, there's 70 words. That, is, that translates to three words or five words, uh, four words per local government. And in some local government, we have 14, 14 words, we have 11 words, we have 13 words, we have four, uh, 12 words. So how does... Uh, campaigning in only three words out of 13 words, 14 words, translates into winning. Even when you look at, even when you look at the structure, if you are just because you are not in Delta, if you are in Delta State, nobody is even talking about the LPC governorship candidate. Okay. Why? Unless few persons that are state. If you look at, if you even look at the spread, the uh, governorship candidate is from Delta Central. The chairman of the party is from Delta Central. 90% of the people who constitute the campaign committee council is from Delta Center. It's only the DG of campaign that is from South. And the DG of campaign cannot even win his unit. The same okay. DG, the same person, what do they call him, Orubebe, who was shouting at the National Assembly because he wasn't able to deliver, is now the campaign DG. You don't use a failure to okay. come to win election. You only reaffirm failure. Okay, we have to go. I want to say thank you. I wish you and the PDP in Delta State good luck. Hopefully, um, your peace process and, of course, um, your campaigns go well. I'm um, wishing every other political party in Delta State the same luck. Ugaga Gane Ogeneyole is the deputy DG for More Delta Youth Project uh, in Delta State and is also a member of the PDP. Thank you so much for being here. It's good to have you again. Uh, well, thank you all for being part of the conversation tonight. That's where we draw the curtains. We'll be back tomorrow with the biggest stories on the Nigerian political scene. And my name is Mary Anna. Come see you tomorrow. <laughs>